Hey everyone, in the last lesson we talked about the transcriptional activation of macro autophagy, but in this lesson we're going to talk about how transcriptional regulation can lead to a suppression or a decreased macro autophagy function. So in this lesson we're going to talk about several transcriptional repressors of macro autophagy including ZAXCAN3, HSF1 or heat shock factor 1, TCF4, XBP1, FXR, and nuclear factor kappa b or nf kappa b so in this lesson we're going to talk about how these nuclear or these transcriptional repressors actually can suppress macrotophagy function so here is the macrotophagy pathway so the first transcriptional repressor of macrotophagy i want to talk about is zaxcan3 and we can think about zaxcan3 as being the opposite of tfeb so with tfeb remember we remember that tfeb during the fed state TVB resides in, in the cytosol, but during a fasting state, TVB enters the nucleus. But it's the opposite with Zaxcan3. During a fasting state, Zaxcan3 is in the cytosol, but during a fed state, Zaxcan3 enters the nucleus. So when Zaxcan3 enters the nucleus, it can bind to the DNA and repress certain genes and actually represses um, TVB. It's a negative regulator of TVB, but it also has its own effects. It also represses genes such as bulk one It represses genes like LC3. And it represses some of these WIPI proteins as well. So again, ZAXCAN3 enters the nucleus during the fed state. So in a fed state, it's in the nucleus. And when it's in the nucleus, it can repress the expression of bulk 1, WIPI proteins, and LC3. The next transcriptional repressor of macrotophagy I want to talk about is heat shock factor 1, or HSF1. And we can think about HSF1 as being the opposite of NRF2. And we've learned that NRF2 upregulates P62. So actually, HSF1 does the opposite. It actually suppresses the expression of p62 so that is what the major effect of hsf1 is it suppresses the levels of p62 the next repressor of macrotophagy i want to talk about is tcf4 and tcf4 is regulated by beta catenin so tcf4 is regulated by binding to beta catenin and in fact, it's a, it's a different type of regulation on TCF4. So when beta-catenin is bound to TCF4, TCF4 is able to suppress P62. So when beta-catenin is bound to TCF4, it's able to suppress P62. So TCF4 suppresses P62. But when LC3 binds to beta-catenin, it leads to its proteasomal degradation. So beta-catenin gets suppressed, leading to a suppression of TCF4 and a suppression of its inhibition on P62. The next regulator of the macrotophagy pathway is XBP1. And XBP1 is activated during ER stress, and it has a dual function in regulating the macrotophagy pathway and in one way actually upregulates some proteins in the macrotophagy pathway and in other ways it actually suppresses the expression of other proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. So when XBP1 enters the nucleus upon activation it can actually upregulate Becklin1. So it can actually upregulate Becklin1 but it also has roles in inhibiting it has roles in inhibiting FOXO proteins. It has roles in inhibiting FOXO proteins, and we've learned that FOXO proteins can lead to the upregulation of other ATG proteins such as ATG4, ATG5, uh, ATG12, and uh, also um, LC3 and. Alk one So because it suppresses 
foxoproteins, it can suppress a lot of these other proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. Um, again, LC3, ATG4, ATG5, and OK1. So it has some dual function. It can upregulate Becklin 1, but it can also downregulate some of these other target proteins that are regulated by FOXO proteins. And in fact, one of the targets of FOXO is Becklin itself. So in one way, upregulate Becklin, but in another way, can downregulate Becklin. The next transcription repressor of macrotophagy is FXR. And we can think about FXR as being the opposite of PPAR alpha. And in fact, it has a repressive effect on the nearly identical genes that PPAR alpha upregulates. So during the fed condition, FXR resides in the nucleus. And when it's in the nucleus, it can repress genes such as ATG3, ATG5, ATG7, Becklin1, LC3 proteins. It can itself repress TFEB. Remember, we talked about PPAR alpha being a regulator of TFEB, and FXR is actually an inhibitor of TFEB, and it can also suppress OK1. So remember that FXR is the opposite of PPAR alpha. It can suppress the genes that PPAR alpha actually upregulates, including LC3, OK1, Becklin1, and some of these ATG proteins. So it has a major influence on the macrotophagy pathway itself by suppressing a lot of these initiating and uh, initiating steps and some of these um, elongation and maturation steps, but itself can also inhibit TFEB. And remember, TFEB is the mass regulator of lysosomal biogenesis and macrotophagy function. So remember, TFEB has a lot of targets itself. So, t so FXR can actually inhibit many, many different parts of the macrotophagy pathway. Not only, not only the macrotophagy pathway, but also it can suppress lysosomal biogenesis through its suppression of TFEB. And the last transcriptional regulator I want to talk about is NF-kappa B, or nuclear factor kappa B. And like XBP1, NF-kappa B can have a dual regulatory effect on the macrotophagy pathway. So when NF-kappa B enters the nucleus, it itself can actually upregulate a couple of proteins in the macrotophagy pathway. One of those is Becklin-1. So NF-kappa B itself can upregulate Becklin-1, and it can also upregulate P62. So NF-kappa B itself can upregulate Becklin-1 and P62, but it also can inhibit macrotophagy by suppressing E2F1. And remember, we talked about E2F1 as being a transcriptional activator of macrotophagy. E2F1's targets include ATG5, LC3, and OK1. So NF-kappa B, by suppressing E2F1, can suppress ATG5, LC3, and OK1. So NF-kappa B has a couple of different roles. It can increase parts of the macrotophagy pathway, such as Becklin-1 and P62, but itself can inhibit E2F1 and lead to the suppression of OK1, LC3, and ATG5. Anyways, guys, that was another lesson on transcriptional regulation of macrotophagy with a specific emphasis on transcriptional repression of macrotophagy. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.